Thanks for joining me, Bastish B, for Import City. A look at the world of 80s and 90s Japanese gaming. In particular, we're going to check out Japan exclusive games and English fan translations and show some really fun stuff that require no Japanese to enjoy. If you like the Famicom, Super Famicom, Mega Drive, Mega CD, Saturn, and PSX, then this may be for you. So now let's check out today's two games. And on today's episode, we're going to have a look at two exclusive Japanese Sega Saturn games, namely Groove on Fart and Astra Superstars. And in the pop culture segment, we'll be having a look at Japan and all its various forms of martial arts. And in today's episode, I'll be joined by import gaming aficionado Retro Drew, and I'll let him introduce himself. Hey, thanks for having me on the show, Bastik. And if any of you are unfamiliar with my channel, Retro Drew, well, it's all about covering obscure import games that not a lot of people have talked about. And on top of that, I do video game pickups episodes, as well as video game themed episodes where I just talk about various gaming topics. So if any of that sounds right up your alley, be sure to check out my channel. And now let's jump over to our first game. Groove on Fight was released in 1997 on the Sega Saturn and Arcade exclusively in Japan by Atlas. From a Western perspective, it seemed like Atlas didn't support the Saturn in any way. But in Japan, they were a top developer, with multiple games in the Shin Megami Tensei RPG series and the brilliant Japan exclusive Princess Crown also being released. This was just another game that never got an international debut. Groove was the fourth game in the Power Instinct series of fighting games, which saw at least the first game released in English on the Super Nintendo and Genesis, but was quickly forgotten in the 90s glut of fighters. Groove on Fight takes the basic element of those games and dials it up into a tag team based versus fighting mold that keeps all the same wackiness of the game world intact, although the players are almost all new characters. The arcade featured 11 characters to choose from, with the Saturn version dialing it up to 14, which is a significant amount. I'd describe this game as a cross between Capcom's Darkstalkers and the X Men vs. Street Fighter games. It has the crazy unpredictable character roster and weird gothic steampunk style world with the play mechanics of the Capcom tag team games. Just like in those games, you pick two fighters and start. The second character can be tagged in at any time, giving a bit of strategy to balancing those health bars. Specials are also present and are pretty easy to pull off, so you don't have to have a phone book like Mortal Kombat strategy guard sitting next to you to pull off a simple move. And if you have a satin multi-tap, four people can play at once, each taking a character in a tag team versus match. Which which is pretty damn impressive. The game also has a story mode, but it's obviously in Japanese and it is lost on me. It doesn't hurt the game at all though, as the core mechanic is easy to understand and play, and the game is still import friendly with all the English menus. This game for me's charm comes in three pieces. Extremely fun and diverse characters make each one feel completely different and a joy to learn. Simple, easy to get to grips with gameplay, make it a fun party game. And last but definitely not least is that groovy soundtrack. I'm assuming that's where the name comes from. It's a clash of every music style in one game and reminds me a lot of classic Sega style soundtracks from this period. The Saturn version also includes an arranged soundtrack as well, something quite common in Japanese releases. You'll also need a RAM card to play it. It boosts the animation in the game, much like the Capcom vs games did. My only real gripe at this game is the loading. There is a lot of it, so you better get used to seeing that screen. It does slow the pace down quite a bit, but not enough to ruin the whole experience. You just need to exit exercise a little bit of patience. Overall a bit of a forgotten gem I feel. It's import friendly and will definitely be enjoyed by anyone who likes the tag team style versus games or is looking for a fighting game that's just a little bit different. And in today's segment about Japan, we'll take a quick look at Japanese martial arts in all its styles. In Japan these categories are divided into three main styles, striking, grappling and weapons. Most of these styles are aimed at self-defense and try to minimize the risk of injury to your opponent. In the striking category, the two most popular are Karate and Taekwondo. Both those arts trace their origins to China and Korea, respectively. Japanese Karate originated on the islands of Okinawa and is based on Chinese Kenpo. Okinawa is an island off the coast of Japan, so these techniques were developed in isolation for many centuries before being introduced to the mainland and the world en masse, mainly after World War II due to the 
the many Americans being stationed there during the war and learning and spreading its art. Grappling martial arts have four major styles, Jiu Jitsu, Judo, Sumo and Aikido. Jiu Jitsu originated and was developed by samurai to disarm opponents if you find yourself in a situation without a weapon. Judo is similar and is based on Jiu Jitsu. This is where you use an opponent's strength against them to take them out and gained international fame after being introduced in the 1964 Tokyo Olympic Games. Aikido is a relatively modern art developed and honed between the 1930s and 60s and is used to neutralize a situation before it begins. And the final grappling art is Sumo which started more than 2,000 years ago but has become one of Japan's most popular sports. It employs many old religious traditions based on Shinto with its combination of strength and balance being the art. Finally in the weapon style we have Kendo and Kyodo. Kendo which means way of the sword is the art of training with wooden sword and dates back to the samurai training days. Kyodo, which is known as the way of the bow, is the spiritual art of archery. Both these arts in Japan share long traditions of competition in various forms that has become more and more popular over the years. The goal overall though in all Japanese style arts is to gain self-improvement self-esteem and personal growth and in a sense is a form of meditation and balance in life. Today's games feature many forms of these arts but don't stick to any one style but in future episodes we can elaborate on some of these styles more when dealing with games that stick to one particular art. And now on to our second review. Released by Sunsoft in 1996 on Sega's black box of shmups and fighters we have Astra Superstars which is more than just your ordinary fighter. As a whole, it's a wacky, well-paced romp that can be enjoyed by just about anyone. But let's break things down a bit further. By just eyeing the footage, I'm sure you can see that Astro Superstars ventures outside the normalcy of the genre, as every battle is basically airborne. This lends itself to some unprecedented features like being able to dodge under attacks or setting yourself up to do some devastating damage from below. And while these dogfights are a touch floaty, I can assure you that the controls and overall feel are tighter than they look. The playfield isn't the only unique mechanic, as Astro Superstars doesn't rely on the established Street Fighter control style, but instead can best be described as a mashup between Smash Bros and Street Fighter, as your face buttons all do different attacks, two of which are your specials, and after performing a Street Fighter button combo, one can unleash a super as well. Personally, I adore this mixing of the playstyles as it caters towards a simple pick up and play feel that just about anyone can easily adapt to after one or two rounds, but it does go a bit deeper for those who want some extra depth in their fighting systems. For example, the game has a reversal system as well as a guard break, but most interestingly is the game will grade you based on how well you fight. So if a round times out, just because you have more health doesn't guarantee you the victory you better hope you've outmatched your opponent's technical prowess. Graphically, the game isn't going to knock you off your feet, as I think just about every Capcom fighter of the time blows this one out of the water. But I won't deny that this game succeeds at its own style. The over-the-top moves carried out by each character all have a unique and colorful flair to them, as do the characters themselves. I mean, where else are you going to fight an anime girl sporting her best Santa cosplay who's not afraid to give you a taste of Santa's sack? Or how about the anime embodiment of Cupid, who can smack you around with her wings that she can grow at will? And you've got to love little details like pummeling your opponent so hard that they turn into a pinball and ricochet around the screen, or that a handful of the songs that score these fights have vocals. The backdrops to each fight are also quite serviceable with their striking colors and neat touches throughout. I mean, just about every stage pops thanks to the pre-rendered backgrounds. Also, you gotta love Tescoon's stage, which is just a mishmash of random textures on what is presumably a skyline. As I stated at the top of this review, Astro Superstars delivers on a unique, yet familiar take on the fighting game genre that has definitely stood the test of time. So next time you're in need of a fresh fighter, why not give Astro Superstars a shot? And of course, before I wrap this up, I'd like to give Bastik a huge thank you for having me on the show. And if you like this review, feel free to check out my channel as there are plenty more like it. 